And right now what we'll do is we'll take some questions, and I'll go back through and make sure I label all of this so that you have, um, uh, if, you didn't, if you missed any of where those objects came from, you can find them. So go ahead and drop any questions you have into the uh, questions window while I label these objects. It's my vector two point. This is a square. Divide. Average. Vector decompose. This is negative. Vector preview. This is vector XYZ. All right, so there was, one question was um, about the decay. How is the decay happening? So if I go all the way back to my uh, original set of vectors, right, that I've averaged, decay is happening over distance from the square root, uh, sorry, the, the, taking the length of the vector and squaring it, and then dividing the vector by that square. So if you think about the distance from here to here as being 1, right, the length is 1, so the square of 1 is 1, and the vector length over 1 gives you the original vector. But if the, if the length was like 30, right, um, 30 times 30 is 900. Now you're dividing your vector by 900, so it's 1 900th of its original size. And that way the influence here is small, and the influence here is big uh, on a kind of relative scale. And what we've done here is essentially with this expression, gone from um, a graph that looks like uh, a line, right? So if you're close, the original vectors would say here, the distance where you're close is small. The distance where you're far is big. So the influence would happen like that. Alternatively, what we've done with our expression is that we are saying that where it is close, it is big. And where it is far, it is small. And you get a fall-off curve like this, right? So this is, this is not, not fall-off. It's the opposite, right? This is fall off. So where you're close, it's big. Where you're far, it's small. These are just graph mapper objects I'm using to quickly draw a graph for you guys. All right, so I'll leave these in here and I'll label them uh, linear and inverse square for you. Okay, so another question was, how can you diminish the effect of the uh, attractor based on distance rather than decay? So, um, that question is maybe a little bit uh, misleading because we, the decay is actually related to distance. But if you wanted to, say, affect the decay in a particular way, or that, let's say, I want it after it gets a certain distance, I want it to then start to gain, right, or at a certain rate, um, the easiest way to think about that is actually to um, use a multiplier, right? So if I take my average vector right here before it but after the divide here I can multiply that resulting vector which is coming from the inverse square times a factor right so starting at 1 maybe going up to 10 so this would be just a simple multiplier that allows me to increase the influence of my vectors, right? Now, there, these, th these guys are getting really long. But that's a separate issue. But this would be a way to change the, uh, the decay over distance. 
Okay. Um, and then the last question that we got was, is force inversely proportional to the square of the distance? Um, force would not be inversely proportional to the square of the distance. It would be proportional to the square. Yes, the, the inverse square of the distance is the value that we're going to be using. So essentially, the force is equivalent to that, right? So near the, the attractor, or let's say magnet, right, the force is high. As you go away, the force is low, and we're decaying, instead of linearly, we're decaying across an inverse square graph. Okay, and then um, since I said that we would do it um, previously, let's go ahead and let's get something like the vector display into Rhino, right? So the vector display is not something that you can bake. It won't give you any results. So we need to remake something similar, right? So if we go to the curve tab under primitive, there's something called line SDL, and that's the line by uh, start point, tangent, and length, or start point, direction, and length, same thing. So if we drop that in, and we go from the original grid point along this vector, D, turn the preview off here so we can see, these are all now the same length, right? So if you wanted them all to be the same length, you could just use a slider and just be working with them all having the same length. So you can get this kind of like hairy preview, right? Or looks kind of like fur, right? Or if you want the length to be related back to the length of your vector, you could say, I want to take the length of my vector from vector, vector, um, vector length, and use that as my input. Right, which again, I might need to, sorry, increase my values here so I get a, some lines that are good. All right now, the reason that these really, really long lines are happening is because my points are on or really close to a grid point, right? So if it's less than zero and you do the inverse square, sorry, less than one and you do the inverse square, it actually gets bigger instead of decaying. Right, so um, all you'd have to do here is to specify a minimum value of one for anything that's really close. So let's go ahead and do that real quick so we get some nice lines as a result. Let's go to math. Um, utilities, minimum. I'm going to take the minimum length between uh, the minimum of the length or one. That's incorrect. These objects are labeled kind of funny. We want actually the maximum value between the length and a value of one. So anything below one will become now one. All right, so now they're not too long. Okay, so now these are lines, and their lengths are corresponding to the influence. So if I want to get those into Rhino, right, we know we can bake those objects, but there's also an option if you right-click the object and say bake dot dot dot, we can say that we want to have decorations, arrow at end, and let's group it, that sounds good, hit OK. Select last, and here are all of my lines with arrowheads, right? So now you've essentially baked something that's like the vector preview. So here's our lines for preview bake. All right, really good question. Now again, if you're taking these into Illustrator, you're going to have to reapply that decoration in Illustrator because it doesn't come through. But uh, you can do a drawing set from uh, Rhino uh, just with what we have here. Okay.
All right, so I'm going to save this file and let's move on. It's a really good question.